Hi, welcome to the Stitch TV show. I'm Len. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. <laughs> the Stitch is an online quilt talk show. It is the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. You can join us for our talk shows as today, also tutorial videos, virtual stitch-ins, and book clubs. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Our show today is brought to you by our friends Inmart and QT Fabrics. You can learn more about them in the links to the show notes. So uh, we have the fun Tuffet back with the Dan Morris Radiance line, which goes quite well with the quilt. I think, us. yeah, it was perfect that you had a Tuffet and the... In, in the mushroom. And the Alice in Wonderland quilt. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that works. But no granny cats or caterpillars on top of it. No. no. And... And I don't think it has psychedelic, um, you know, properties when you eat it. That's what I'm saying. I would maybe like not recommend did. eating the foam inside I would the tuffet. Either. No. Yeah, I would say that's a bad idea. There's probably a tag on the bottom that says not for eating. <laughs> Do not digest. Also not for eating, Irish thread from Inmart, <laughs> which I have to tell my cats frequently. <laughs> but they did name it Grape, so I can see where you might get It looks confused. delicious. It looks delicious, but don't eat it. No. <laughs> Didn't you use Irish thread in this? I did. <gasps> All the, you did. used all the threads. I did. I used a ton of various threads. All of I the don't threads. even know how many threads. I know there's a trash can full of threads that I trimmed away, you know, from starting and stopping. So, anyway, to get today, we're going to be talking about quilt show judges' comments <gasps> and tips for photographing quilts. We're joined by my quilt identity. Uh... So, our big what's up topic, um, hey, we had a quilt show, and yay, it's done. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> well, you've heard us talk about it for, like, I don't know, three months. Oh, the quilt show. Oh, I'm so cold, dude. Oh, oh it's done just show. in time for us to start panicking about quilt market. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Because we just got our contract on that. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad we have a plan of how we're going to panic on the next project. I mean, so, we got like a good two weeks where we're cleared not to panic, but can then I, we need to ramp up. Can I the sleep pain. during those two weeks? Mm, no. Actually, I'm lecturing. At You're a lecturing. Before. You have stuff to do. I have stuff to do. Dang it. So yeah, the show went well. It did. Um, we were a part of the Certified Judges Association, um, and they partnered with our show. So we had um, I don't know twenty judging candidates mm -hmm. and. Um, people who were going through the certification classes, and they were helping out in the judging room, which is what I was in charge of the judging and jurying. And um, that went really well, and we've gotten some great feedback from that organization that they very much enjoyed our show and felt like it was a great experience for their candidates. So yay us on that, and that went well. So that was, once that was over, the rest of the show for me, I did a praising and um, and I got to talk to you a little bit. I floated around yeah. Saturday morning, and then I was white glove hostessing, which really just involved a lot of, like, jazz hands. With gloves on, though. That makes it better. With the Mickey Mouse gloves on. <laughs> like, they felt giant. And yeah. plus, we had good music yes, from the playlist. Yes, we made this playlist. We did. So there was a lot of... I tweaked it a little. There was a lot of grooving happening on the show yeah. floor. And I will tell you that... People have asked me multiple times where who put this music together. I was like, we did. Yeah. Well, a lot of quilt shows just have dead silence. Oh, yeah. Which I think Ours is, is fun. I, I get that. Yeah, that's how museums work, too. But, <laughs> yeah. but it was seems so to be a lot more communal than yeah. fine art. Well, it was fun <laughs> because you'd see people walking down the aisles kind of, like, you know. Bopping. Yeah. Take Mouthing it. the words to stay alive. Whatever it was playing, <laughs> it was all good. Um, and so that was fun. And, then, and if people want to follow it, yeah. they can. It's on um, Spotify. Spotify, and the name of the playlist is called Quilt Show, all one word, and you can follow it. So you can, and it's got like six days worth of music. <laughs> we went crazy. We put over three hundred and something songs on there. So. Anyway, all genres. Yeah. So that Fun. brings us to our first topic, reading the judges' comments. Okay. Now, I will say, since I ran the judges' room, I did get to see some of them in person, but I didn't get to see all of yours judged because I'm busy. I'm doing other stuff. And I did get to see both of, my, both of the ones I entered judged. So 
that I don't remember what they said. Well, so you start since you have four. So, yes. Um, I'm going to start with Bluebird of Happiness, which hung in a previous episode. It's the one with the black background and then the brightly colored applique that's in the center. And it all kind of fills out to make a square. So, Visual Impact has a very good... Oh, so reminder, these go from excellent, very good, good, satisfactory, and needs improvement. Uh, and then if it won awards and stuff. So, very good visual impact, which, duh, that's why I like the pattern and bought it from Karen K. Buckley. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. <laughs> Karen did a good job. <laughs> um, I got very goods in color and fabric for value and scale and degree of difficulty. Heck yeah. <laughs> Complexity of design and creativity. Like, a lot of that design stuff is credit to Karen. Like, I picked my fabrics. Uh, but, you know, hey. Thanks, Karen. Um, use of design principles, unity, movement, proportion, scale, and balance was good. I don't know what I borked up there, but probably because I didn't quite lay stuff out exactly, and there were some overlapping shapes that weren't meant to be overlapping, but whatever. Oh, there you go. I knew that. I Could was be. Like, I didn't get to see this one, John. Okay. <coughs> but, so this was my first hand applique, and I got a good on applique techniques, which is That's high praise for someone that used to make a lot of square circles. <laughs> Um, no piecing techniques, uh, very good special techniques. So the embroidery, because there wasn't really anything else. No, um, that's what they were commenting I, on. I like, they're like, ooh, very good borders and sashings. There was none of that. It was like just extra fabric on the background. <laughs> but cool, thanks. Uh, good quilting you, technique. Well, you added stuff into the quilting on the borders, yes. which is, I think, what they were commenting on. But that gets on. reflected in uh, the good. Well, for quilting technique, even stitches, tension, I got a good, and we'll get to the comment why. Um, and then finishing techniques like corners and binding, good. Uh, and so the comment is clever use of quilting designs to extend the central design. So like my little worm friend and the snail and the other butterfly. Um, and some fraying noted on applique points, which, yep, knew that. <laughs> totally knew that. <laughs> yeah. So there it is. That's good. There it is. Hooray. But you still, like, okay. because people. I'm so are glad always... they didn't comment that there was, like, we found 11 cat hairs on this. Because that's the one with the flannel background. I have to have lint roll, like, every five minutes. Oh, uh, we lint rolled a lot of quilts when they came in. <laughs> um, but, okay, you've read that now. Does that change your opinion of your own quilt? No, I still like it. I still knew that stuff. Yeah, see, I, I think still knew that... I got like a weird point on there that I didn't quite know what to do with. I'm like, oh, it's tough. To... maybe they won't notice. They notice. Yeah, they they're gonna notice. notice. They're so gonna notice. All right, read another one. Because you know they're paid to, to notice. Okay, they are. So which one's this one? This oh, this one's Dresden Garden, which you guys will see hanging behind us in the next show. Um, and that's the combination. It's got the Dresden. Uh, plates as flowers in the center and then like half dresdens around the border. And that was my like six year UFO. Or one UFO. My one UFO. Oh my so gosh. this was, oh, both of these were entered in a tough category. If you enter applique in our I'm guild not going to win a ribbon in applique. Let me period. just tell you, you are up against some nationally winning people. Yes. Yeah. So oh like I gosh, yes. was like, yeah, I'm not winning. Yeah. Anything. And I think the well, the best of show came out of that category. Yeah, I did. So, yeah. So, this was in a combination because I had, like, the pieced background and stuff, and then I'd added a lot right. of quilting designs and some embroidery. And anyway, it took forever. And so, whatever they say, I'm like, sweet, still done. Still going to hang in my living room. Okay. Okay. Visual impact, very good. Well, since that was your design, that's even more a plus. Yeah. Like, yeah. Adita Sitar developed the templates that I used for the Dresden plates. But, like, but beyond you, that, I was you like... You did all the layout, though. Yeah. I mean, it was totally... Yep. Um, so all the design stuff, so complexity, degree of difficulty, creativity, quilting design, all got very good. Right. Smug. Okay, yeah, workmanship. <laughs> workmanship. Workmanship. So That's applique techniques them. got a good, and I'm not sure what's up with that other than I wonder because in the center of my Dresdens I used a very dark fabric and the technique I used to get the circles I put the front of my circle like right sides together with like a piece of muslin and I wonder if I should have used a piece of the same fabric 
then oh. stitched around the circle, cut out the back, and then flipped it out and pressed it. And I wonder if it's because there are parts where you can see, like, the muslin around the edge. Yep, I bet that's it. So that's my guess there. Now, yes, I did go back with a marker and color some of those <laughs> so they weren't as obvious, but— Oh, you look close enough, you can still see them. Um, <laughs> and they do look close at the quilts. They really do. Even yeah. as limited time as they have, they yeah. do look close. Now, piecing got a good, and I totally get why. Because I had pieced that background, I was nesting seams between two-inch squares, building up to three-and-a-half-inch squares, and six-and-a-half-inch squares. And so I wasn't pressing seams open. And I feel like if I had done that, I wouldn't have the shadowing. Because at the time— that I constructed this six years ago, I wasn't as precise in how I nested seams to make sure that there wasn't shadowing or, like, it wasn't quite pressed all the way as it needed to be. Right. Uh, borders and sashings were good. Quilting techniques, good. Finishing techniques, good. Um, the contrast quilting creates beautiful layered look, which I think is talking about how I mimicked the leaf shape in the quilting design and likewise some of the Dresden plates. I, I think it also has to do with that checkerboard where it gives you, you know, dimension. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, P.S. Density of quilting should be evenly distributed. Durr. <laughs> okay, so note on judges' comments, they never say, girl, your quilting is not evenly distributed. They're just like, you know, it should be evenly distributed. Like, something to think about. Like, it's yeah. never directly targeted as, like, you are bad at this thing. They're it's like, just like, we notice that this is there. I happen to have this thought pop in my head when I looked at your quilt. Yeah. You know, quilting should be evenly distributed. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Which, uh, totally true. Because I noticed as I was going through, and there's been videos that I posted on the channel about the micro stippling. When I look back at my earlier micro stippling compared to the middle of the journey, <laughs> it's a lot more dense in the beginning. And then I was like, oh. <laughs> Uh, just get it done. And so I was not as dense as I was working in the middle part. So totally valid. But my quilt's still done. I still like it. I think that's what's important. Yep. All right. Now, I did see them judge this. But Which our, one is this? This is transformed. So this is ours. Our goose quilt. Oh, ones. and just so you know, you get a little tag to put on the back of a quilt. Once they get a place, they tell you what place you got. So you get to put that on the back of the quilt. So this one is Transform, which is the Canadian Goose one. And it won second place. And it won group. second club place, yes. Um, visual impact, excellent. Design, color and fabric, excellent. Design principles, very good. Degree of difficulty, excellent. Complexity of design, excellent. Creativity, excellent. Quilting design, very good. Applique, applique techniques, very good. Piecing techniques, very good. Special techniques, very good. Really, they were excellent, but they missed that. Border and sashing, N.A., because there's not any borders on it. Um, quilting techniques, very good. Um, finishing techniques, very good. And all design elements are beautifully integrated. More care needed with quilting starts and stops. Like, really? Yeah. That's they gotta find so something. True. Well, they want to give something constructive. Well, like, and I'll tell you what, I was slightly disappointed in this one, only because I did watch this be judged, and the judge held up the first and second place winner, and he was like, "This is really close." And I'm hearing him say that, and then he picked the other one as first place, and he turned around, and he did not know it was my quilt, and he turned around and looked at me because I'm in charge of the whole room, and he said. That would have been like a .001 in an Olympic race for who won. And I was like, oh, that was just a, like a little bit of a knife in the heart going, you mean we lost by .0 .001? Um, so anyway, but it won second place, and the quilt that did beat it was excellent. It was very good. So, you know, there it is. They had a little more bling on theirs. It was good. Yeah, quilt. they had a. They had. A, I actually appraised that quilt, and yeah, they had some bling on it. Okay. Um, so, so feeling clammy at the Irish disco. Wait, I want to show them one more thing before you do that. Oh, yeah, sure. So I didn't bring mine. You didn't bring the ribbons. I hung mine up <laughs> in my sewing room so I could be smug about them. Like, <laughs> so these are the ribbons that they gave away, which I think are super neat, and they did these cute little Dresden plates with the prairie points on the edge. 
And, um, of course, this red for second place, the blue ones were first, and um, yellow was third, and then greens were honorable mention. So Orange and, was Judge's Choice. Orange was them. Judge's Choice, and teal was Quilter and Viewer's Choice. So, anyway, I thought they were super cute. So, this will go on Transform. Mm -hmm. And it's actually the only whip, ribbon it's won, even though it's been to a lot of shows. So, it's cool. kind of neat. So... Next, we have Feeling Clammy at the Irish Disco. Which is traveled extensively, too, because that's been in AQS yep. shows, and yeah. Yep, and it won our Guild Challenge for right. 2018. Uh, and so it got an honorable mention in the show. Visual impact, very good. <laughs> uh, color and fabric and quilting design was very good. And then all the other design principles, oh, use of design principles was very good. And then the difficulty and complexity and creativity got good marks. So for workmanship, no applique. Um, I got a circle around precise on piecing techniques, and it was rated good. I don't know if that means like it, that was the thing that made it good or that was the thing that kept it from being very good. I'm not sure how to interpret that. Oh, gosh, they answered this question after, and I halfway listened to it because people are talking to me, too. So they said that usually if that's what they were focusing on. So if okay. it was, that's what it was referring to. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no special techniques or borders. The quilting techniques got a good, uh, mostly first starts and stops being maybe evident. And then finishing techniques got a good with the word straight is circled, which, like, der. Yeah, I was just trying to get it done before the meeting when I had to present it. <laughs> like, yep. Uh, color and neutral placement create movements. The variety of quilting designs greatly enhance and add texture. If you guys remember, I did a different quilting design in every clamshell. And <coughs> I started to ran, run out of ideas. So well, ooh, they didn't notice. Yeah, but I, <coughs> I think that that one, you were kind of expanding, doing multiple different quilting designs, too. That's one of the first ones you really did a lot of mm -hmm. different quilting designs. So the fact that they like that, I think, is really cool. And here's a thought that popped in their head when they looked at my quilt. Ditch tilting should stay in the ditch. <laughs> <laughs> like, sure should. That's why it's called ditch quilting. <laughs> that is. Could be the reason. Could be it. Noted. There you go. Now, I haven't seen this at all. Ditch do, do. This is um, Identity. So I watched them judge it, but again, unfortunately, I don't get to watch closely only because there's other stuff. Well, on. there's 30 people standing in the room and they're all wanting me to answer stuff. All right. Um, visual impact, very good. Color and fabric, very good. Design principles, good. Degree of difficulty, very good. Complexity of design, very good. Creativity, very good. Quilting design, good. Um, applique. And remember, the only thing that's quilted on here is outlines. It's not, the thread painting is not quilted. It's thread painted and then hidden in the middle of the quilt. So, applique techniques in a, piecing techniques in a, which is true. I didn't piece a thing. Didn't you piece the back? I did piece the back. Well, there you go. Yeah, they missed that part. Hmm. They never look at that. <laughs> um, special techniques, good. Um, borders and sashing in A. Quilting techniques, satisfactory. Um, ooh, I got satisfactory? Really? Hmm. Uh, it was my starts and stops, I'm telling you. Um, finishing techniques, good. Thread painting creates a strong frame around design. Density of quilting should be evenly distributed. I think because you've got... Like, yeah, you know, I didn't quilt in there. That could be it. They did, and I shouldn't know this, but I do know this, they did hold it for Judge's Choice. And honestly, they picked Pam's over mine. They picked My Brain is a Jerk. He walked by and he went. He did. He was like, my, he was touching mine. And then he went over and touched Pam's. He was like, he picked up Pam's. I was like, I came that close. <laughs> So, but it was very cool. I'm glad. I was super happy that that one got it because I think it's an important message. So, um, but they both looked, they had probably 
20 quilts. And she looked at mine, too, but yeah. one of the judges definitely looked at mine. I was like, oh, missed it by that much. So, my brain is a jerk. Which one? Judge's Choice. Uh, visual impact, very good. Um, all of the design elements, so color and fabric and design principles, difficulty, all that got very good. Creativity got an excellent. There you go. Not bad for the first time I used a couching foot. <laughs> oh, and that was perfect. Yeah. I loved that. It was um, so good. So applique techniques and piecing got very good. Uh, special techniques, borders, quilting techniques, and finishing techniques all got a good. Um, so comments are clever message. Background piecing was a good choice. I'm like, yeah, because it made it a little more interesting. Um, yeah, tension issues noted on back. Note that too. Yeah. It's Thank God they're on the back, not the front. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then mental health issues cover a huge spectrum, and every uh, everyone deserves to get the help they need. Congratulations on your great decision and or design and message. And by the way, that was from the judge. Yeah. So when they pick judges' choice, yeah, the handwriting's different. The judge will write why they chose that. Um, on each of the, their choices. And we asked them to do that because we feel like we wanted that extra explanation of why they consider this an interesting quilt, an important quilt, why they are, why are they are, you know, highlighting it separate from some of the others. So I think that that was really neat. Yeah, I was and really happy. what I found interesting, um, the comments that I got in person at the show from people that knew me or that... Either they knew me through the guild, or maybe they've seen the show and are guild members, and I don't see them in the day meeting because right. I don't go to all of them. Most of the comments that I got about my quilt, well, A, was like, oh, I saw all your quilts. And then B, I really like my brain as a jerk. Yeah. I just think it was and there's important. A, and, of course, there was a lot of sharing that yeah, happened. I think um, that's good. What I also found interesting is that that is the one that the kids comment on. They're like, my brain is a jerk. That's funny. And I'm like, it is funny because sometimes your brain's dumb. It tells you dumb stuff. Like, you look dumb today. No, I don't. <laughs> I look like me. Maybe I'm dumb. Shut up, brain. Um, yeah. So I I appreciate that kids like it. And, mm -hmm. and I like that they can get familiar with the idea that, like, sometimes you think negative thoughts that aren't true. Right, I agree. And you don't have to listen to them. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Right. But uh, I I am torn on whether I send that out. Because, like, it's not going to win technique ribbons or anything. I, but, yeah. you know, I feel like uh, I kind of uh, I want people Maybe to Maybe next and, year. Yeah. It's not their aesthetic. That's the thing. Because it's creams and I don't and know. They've got a yeah. message, though. Yeah. They like that. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't figured out QuiltCon, I'll be honest. Yeah. No, I hadn't so. either. And I, I have thought about, like, okay, which of these do I send out? Like, Feeling Clammy's already been out on the AQS circuit. Yeah, but do I send out Dresden Garden, or do I send out My Brain is a Jerk, or eh, what? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We will think about it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this one's going out. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I Because I, okay, so I get that they felt like more quilting was needed in that area, but to me it destroyed the area. If I quilted it. And I didn't want yeah. that. So I left it blank. And that was my personal artistic decision. So that's two people's opinions on that. Guess what? That's two people's opinions on that. And my opinion wins because I'm the owner of the quilt and I made it. So, yep. I, okay. They didn't like it. So I don't know. And maybe I just, I don't know. I don't know. I do enough talking and trunk shows that I kind of like this with me to have both of the Alice in Wonderlands with me. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm already planning the next one. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. I oh, am. I'm already planning my next one too. I know. It's like we just got done. And I'm like, all right. So the next Alice in Wonderland is going to be. My next one's called Best of Show. <laughs> <laughs> That would be good with all the ribbons on it. That'd oh. be good. Oh. Oh. There's a whole story. I can't wait story. to hear it. The whole story. <laughs> all right. So here's what we want to tell you. Enter your quilts into shows, and don't be afraid of the judge's comments because it's a person's opinion, and you get to have other opinions. And so. you know what? 
you get one of the blank judging forms. Like, just create your own judging form and send it to your mom or someone that loves you. Be like, would you leave some comments about my quilt? <laughs> yeah, there you go. And there you go. There you go. <laughs> I mean, I will tell you, the judges didn't like it, but anytime I was on the floor, people were like, oh, that's your quilt? Oh, my gosh. And they were so complimentary, impressed. I, I mean— any quilt you've got hanging up at the show, people are like that. So it got in a show. It got in a show. Come on, that's a big deal. So. Yeah, I mean, it's not yeah. like we're hanging them all up in our house and like everybody come to my personal quilt yes, show. Yes, come to my. No. I do that when I go speak at guilds. It's my personal quilt show, but they're all in. You know, they paid me to come, so I guess there's an inherent they're gonna like it. One hopes. One would hope. Anyway. All right, so now we're going to take a closer look at identity, and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> I just made a really weird face. Sorry about that. That's <laughs> it's just my face. It always normal. looks like that. Okay, so what we're going to talk about next. Photographing quilts. Yes, photographing quilts. So you put this on the... You put the th on the thing. I did? You did. I did not put she this. She put it on that list. <laughs> I totally don't remember she that. Put it on the list. Must have been drugged that day. All right. So what do we want to I talk thought you quit heroin. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Did you ago. fall off your resolution <laughs> <No>. already? <laughs> I'm thinking cold drugs. I've oh. been on cold drugs for a week. That's not as exciting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Photographing quilts, which you put on the list. And I was like, all right. I don't think I'm that great at it, but sure. Um, so there's multiple reasons to photograph quilts. There are. Uh, I think the most casual reason <clears throat> is like, I, I like my quilts. I sewed a thing, and I want to show people on social media. That's true. Yeah. And there I think it's a lot of avoiding shadowing. Staging. I mean, it depends on what you're... Well, yeah, people get fancy into staging. They get fancy into staging a quilt. <sighs> I ain't got time for that. It's going to be like, hey, look, my dog is on the quilt I just made. <laughs> I do have pictures of Josie laying on the quilt like, hey. Um, yeah. So. So there, I mean, you can get super fancy with staging, and we are not the experts on that. Uh, there are a lot of other. White background. Yeah. A lot of ship black. A lot of, like, <laughs> rough wood painted white. Uh, yes. Very, A lot yeah. of that. And then color-coordinated accessories. Yes. And which, like, if you're brand and you're trying to sell a thing based on your design eye, cool, go for it. <laughs> right. <laughs> a lot of fences. People throw them over fences. You know, so we got a fence put in our backyard for our dog, and then the guy that owns the fence company moved in across the street from us. So I'm tempted just to casually catch him out in the neighborhood, like, you got some sample fences we could use to throw our quilts over? <laughs> <laughs> Like, do you have a fence farm somewhere where you grow fence the fences farm. and we could just... We just put quilts over. Or, like, trucks. Oh, vintage, that's a different neighbor. Yeah, Vintage He's or got like classic different trucks. You vintage cars. And I'm just like, I wonder just if he'd got... notice if I just, like, flung a quilt, took a picture, and then, like, ran off again before uh. he caught me. <laughs> All right. So, but when you are photographing quilts, yes. I think the number one thing... Lighting. Lighting. Lighting's important. And first choice... Magic hour outside. Natural light. Yes. What's the magic or hour Or the golden outside? hour, I think is what it's called. It's the either what, hour. early golden. morning or late afternoon? Right around sunrise and sunset. Yes. So that's definitely probably the number one thing. Yes. Is try to take it outside and try to take it in natural lighting. And I think that if it's a little bit cloudy and not direct light yes. is the best so you want a cloudy day when it's not raining at sunset. <laughs> According to my wedding photographer. Right. Right before an ice storm hits is <laughs> ideal. Okay. <laughs> That's so, a good plan. So we got married in January and there was a lot of like the high diffuse clouds and it because they were so high in the atmosphere, it really like diffused mm -hmm. all the light. And so I have really gorgeous wedding photos. There you go. <laughs> like well, I had something going for me at least. Um, tried not to notice the fact that, like, the hanging loop that I – because I made my wedding dress was, like, hanging out in one of my favorite pictures. And I just, like, 
Photoshop it out. But I oh well. seen Photoshop that out. No, I don't know the negatives. I can't. Because oh. this was old school, like pre-digital stuff. Oh. Anyway. So, yes, light is your friend. Light is your friend. Um, and you definitely want it to be, um, I think if you want to show the quilting, there does need to be some side light so that you can see the dimension in the quilting. And that, especially if you're show, if you're sending this picture in to a show, the oh, only reason— social media. Oh, so I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. I don't know anything. I mean, social lighting media. is still key, but— if you're doing it for a show, and they always ask for a full shot, right. like a flat shot of the quilt, and then a close-up. Right. Now, I thought the close-ups were for color. Some of it, but you want to take a picture of the best part of the quilt. And if that's the quilting, then that's what you need to take a picture of. But you need to have a slight shadow across it so that they can see the quilting. Because if you can get up close, and if your thread matches your background, you'll never see the quilt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you need the sideline. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you do need to be careful with the colors. Yeah. They will tell you in most shows that you can't manipulate. change. You can't manipulate it. So your lighting needs to be good so that you're not manipulating it. Likewise, on social media, Instagram even has a setting where you can, like, increase or decrease shadowing. And I always decrease it because I know I'm not good about lighting in my house. But you can't do that on show quilts. Right. You're not supposed to. Um, entry photos, yeah. Right. On entry photos. And be careful with certain colors. Um, just really make sure you have good lighting, especially when you're talking about navies and blacks. Navies are really hard to photograph. And just from being on a jury team, when the, the photos come in, that's all I'm able to judge your quilt on. So if I don't have a good picture of it, you're not going to get in the show. And it may be a fantastic quilt, but if it's got a really bad picture, and try not to do with the pictures with the little fingers. <laughs> no quilt zombies. Yeah. Where you see the fingers and the to, feet. <laughs> yeah, try not to do that. Um, if you can, hang it up, hang it up. Um, put it on a, on a photo Photo photography backdrop. Yeah. Yeah. But what if you don't have one? Like, what's a good solution? Well, I guess a, a curtain rod. Yeah. Although I at Paducah, I took a class where they talked about photographing quilts. And the way we hang our quilts, they would hate that for a entry photo. Because it's got the little clips in it. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. I think are out of frame for you guys. But we do have, like... Um, cafe rod clips, which actually came up on our virtual stitch in last, last night. night. Yeah. Because uh, I have a cafe rod that hangs quilts behind me in that little space. Right. And the clips aren't sewn onto the quilt because, oh, no, the whole point was for me to avoid more sewing and I didn't want to put sleeves on all those quilts. Well, the reason <laughs> AQS doesn't like it is because at the Paducah show, they sell a book of all the quilt pictures. And information about the quilts that are in the show. Um, because if you've got a quilt in Paducah, you want that book, right? Um, and if they get the, they use the pictures that people send in and not mm. because it's for sale at the show. So they don't have time to take the pictures from a hanging, you know, then turn it in. So that's why they don't like yeah. that. But that's that show, too. Um, although it's a big national show, so. Yeah. So if you needed help with lighting, for example, one of the things that I've done at home, I've got, because we do a lot of videoing and stuff, um, I've got extra light kits. But before I did that, I had like this weird LED work light, which had a very bright white light that my husband was given. But it's the kind that you would use in like a work area just to like cast more, to light. brighten up a room, not right. like a directional spotlight or anything. But on its own, it's like very glaring. And so I had some old picture frames and I took the back out uh, and I got white muslin and I wrapped it around the glass. And then I put that back in the frame without the back. So it was, it looked like I just framed a piece of muslin on this glass. Um, but do, I set that in front of the light and that helps diffuse it. So that's a pretty cheap, I mean, you can get like a $2 frame at a big box store and do that. Yeah, I diffuse stuff with So muslin. even if you just have like, a lamp, like your desk lamp, and you kind of turn it, you can put that in front of it, and that'll help diffuse things. Now, I don't know how many actually print p 
pictures out anymore, but be sure you have a new um, ink cartridge. Ink cartridge, yeah, yeah, and that one of them is not running out. And just so you know, if you're printing pictures of quilts, you will run out of ink quickly. Yes. Very quickly. In my case, you'll run out of cyan first. Because you use teal all the time. I know, because it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm mm. sewing on some right now. <laughs> I looked at, I, so I'm in the middle of sewing this quilt, and you guys will see it soon in some of the tutorial videos. And I'm like, it's exactly the colors that I just used to make my mama quilt. All right, well, there you go. Because <laughs> it's teal and cream and a little bit of purple. That's your favorite. That's my thing. That's how you go. All right, that's all I've got. So what about documenting quilts, like for preservation for family records or for like any tips or things you should photograph there, like every particular block or key design elements, like what should you focus on in photographing there? From an appraisal standpoint, I photograph a picture of the f folk, and by the way, this is not required legally in appraisals. I just like to have pictures of quilts with the appraisal if I can. I don't always get to, but if I can. Um, but I would normally take a full picture of the whole quilt so you can see it. I would take a picture of a close-up of one of the most interesting things on the block. And then I'd try to take a picture of the back of the quilt, preferably with a label if they have it, where you can also see the binding. So it's just usually a back corner of it. Um, now, if you're into documentation, like all the states, um, or a lot of the states have done documentation on quilts and they're actually numbered by what state and it's in a registry now. North Carolina's done it, Georgia's done it, most of the East Coast have done it. Um, and I don't know that all 50 states have done it, but a lot of them have. Um, what they do to document a quilt is they will literally, every stain, every tear, every whatever, they will measure it and say it's 2.5 inches away from this edge and and here's the and it's a quarter inch stain, possibly grease stain, da da da. And they will have <laughs> every stain, every rip, every tear, every fugitive fabric um, documented to say this is the state that this quilt is currently in. I don't think you have to do all that. <laughs> That's for you know a legal kind of you know, state documentation stuff, so. What about backgrounds? So like we've got quilts hanging behind us against a black background, which works great for light colored quilts, but then when we had a dark bird of happiness and hanging, we had to hang something else. We had to put something else in front of it just to differentiate. So that's something else to consider. If you're sending in a photograph to enter a show, you wanna make sure that your background contrasts and is not super busy and distracting because that's gonna be- Well, and way. you're not gonna see much of the background. Well, you're gonna crop most of it out, yeah. but you, you know, if you're not supposed to manipulate photos, you're not supposed to go Photoshop out and remove the background. But I would just say, make sure that you have a clean, background and have it be contrasting with the quilt itself. Yeah. So that's true. Yeah, I agree. Like, I think that looks good on a black background, but all the quilts at the show were hung on white drapes, and I think it looks good on white, too. So. Yeah. Well, I think because it's a color, it's neither black nor white. And it's not dark or inherently really light either. Yeah. Now, Dresden Garden, which I had, is a cream background, but I purposefully used a dark color binding. So there was that distinction. Yeah. Even if it was on a white background, which it was, you're like, oh, there's the end. Right. So, well, that's what I know. Do you need a fancy camera? No. I you oh, well, that's I qualified. I mean, if you have a fancy camera and skills, yeah, use it. Yeah. But, but if you don't, my iPhone takes great pictures. Yeah. So and on so I have And apparently my new one takes better, but I haven't taken any with it yeah. yet. So I have an Android phone and uh, with mine, when I take a picture, I can like just touch when I have the photo app open, I can touch where I want the quilt to focus. And typically what I do is like touch a couple spots until the lighting looks right. Cause again, I don't always have the most even lighting. And so I'm typically gonna touch the darker, the darkest spot to get the lighting to come up that way. But just being mindful that if I have a lot of white in that quilt and I'm bringing up the darkest part, it's gonna blow out the white. <laughs> right, exactly, there's gotta be some. So you get, might have to play around with touching that to see where the focus should be, what the lighting should be set at. 
Right. I ninety percent of the time I'm taking quilts with my phone. I would be really taking curious. pictures of quilts with my phone. So I have um, the ability to do enhancements like face slimming or skin tone evening in my portrait mode. And I'd be real curious if I went to some of the portrait quilts in our show, if I did that and fiddled with it, would it like adjust? That would be interesting. <laughs> that would be interesting. I have, well, my new phone has that capability, but I haven't played with it oh. yet. So mm -mm. it could be a little, a little dodgy. Well, if you post a lot of selfies and then people see you and they're like, uh, by the way, I noticed, your skin. Yeah. I noticed on Facebook, our first selfie came up this week. And it was six years ago. Huh. It was before the stitch. We were at the show, and we it was our the two quilts oh, yeah, that had won, and they were facing each other. Yep. Yep. Good times. Good times. So, anyway. What else? What other questions do you have for me about photography? I don't really. I have to admit, if I need photography done professionally, I go to professionals. There is that. <laughs> I do, because they take better pictures than uh, I do. Yeah, I'm not. But those are only for like our patterns and oh, our, yeah. you know, not necessarily show quilts that I send in. I mean, that I can do. Yeah. But so I don't think you need prof professional photographer for a show quilt. I mean, unless you are... Unless you win Best of Show and then get one yeah. and get really well, good Well, I would say if you are away. a person who has tradition has historically won a lot of Best of Show awards, you're probably investing in good photography anyway. Oh, right. Because yeah. you're using those pictures for more than just entering at a show. Right. Then they become part of your brand and all that yeah. kind of stuff, too. Yeah. We are not there. Nope. 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 Nope, 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 nope. I'd like to win a first place <laughs> once, but didn't. It was 1.001. <laughs> <laughs> we almost had one. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. It's, we'll just have to uh, have our what? own quilt show, Lynn. <laughs> you know what? Even though we didn't win, it doesn't mean that. I'll get my I don't mom think, to get, get us a ribbon. Yeah, we can make our own ribbons. Um, I, I totally believe that it's okay and, you know, life will go on, and I still love our quilts, so... It's well, there you awesome. Go. There you go. So are your quilts picture perfect or do they maybe lack some focus? <laughs> you can let us know. Leave a comment on our blog or the YouTube episode or even <laughs> in our Facebook group, What's Up Stitches. And that's all we have for this episode. Today's show is made possible by Inmart and QT Fabrics. Find links to these wonderful companies in the show notes for today's episode. We'd like to thank 77 Peaches and Big Think Productions for helping produce the stitch. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on notifications on YouTube. The next virtual stitch-in is Friday, July 12th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern. My birthday eve. What? What? Broadcast live on our YouTube channel. And our next book club episode is June 28th. All those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com, along with links to purchase fan gear, quilt patterns, video classes. Tune in next time for more quilting chat with friends.